Hello! This week on the live stream I was asked this interesting question about like how do you how do you deal with that sinking feeling of oh maybe I didn't make this uh, code flexible enough and I went on this interesting rant uh, at least I thought it was interesting on how uh, one can use uh, generalization as a way to procrastinate and also like planning uh, planning as well and also testing strategies to like basically just ensure try to ensure yourself from real or reality and never actually get anything done um, I thought it was a little bit an interesting uh, interesting thought uh, and I've clipped it here for you uh, before we go to the clip I would like to thank today's sponsor brilliant Brilliant is a brilliant sponsor that has been with the show for a long time. Brilliant is a great little service that allows you to uh, do these interactive tutorials. So you don't, they're not like passive video courses, they're interactive and with a sense of progression. Uh, that allows you to learn uh, subjects like uh, computer science uh, or like the math behind uh, machine learning, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that, that just requires a lot of interactivity and repetition uh, in order to actually get them. Uh, it's a really great service. Uh, they're a great supporter of the show, so please check them out if you're, um, if you're interested in learning any of those topics. They're great. Uh, you can go to brilliant.org slash FFF to get uh, quite a bit of your annual subscription. So check that out uh, after the show. I will remind you then as well. Now on to the clip. All right, this one, this question by underscore funk. How do you deal with the feeling of, did I build enough flexibility when starting to write architect this app? I feel I get an anxiety when starting something that might slowly be digging myself into a hole instead of making a thing. And then I spin my wheel looking for solutions based on potential problems. Oh man, oh man, underscore funk, I feel ya. I feel ya. Um, I, uh, I, I, I can't say how much I relate to that. I, I so often get stuck in like writing a writing a piece of code, and then I, uh, I start generalizing a little bit too much. It's too flexible. So like every everything I write takes so much time because general solutions always cost much more um, a lot more actually um, and you know I think that perhaps that's a good proxy recognizing the fact that general solutions wide solutions are ludicrously expensive I kind of like demonstrate found this when I was writing uh, the um, the video this week that I posted, uh, this Monday was about like, I wrote this little habit tracker thing and that thing, I just dirty coded it like, like laser focused on just getting it done and also getting it done for just me, like not a general solution. So it's a habit tracker that it's kind of like, it goes green. Uh, and then I, uh, like, if I don't do the habit, which is like bring my, f bring food to work every day, um, then it goes red and it goes yellow and then it goes red the next day until it like breaks the, the streak. Uh, and it resets itself at midnight every day. And the thing is like midnight is a little bit tricky thing with time zones. So I just went with the Unix epoch, because that is U UTC time. And it's not quite Swedish time. It's, it's like 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. depending on daylight savings time. But that's close enough for me, you know? This code won't work for a US person, um, but I just went for it, you know? It's not perfect, it's a little bit off, but I will never notice that because like, the switch is in the middle of the night anyway. And I really just needed it to work for my case. I just wanted a prototype to test how this feels, you know? I'm not sure if this is even a good way of tracking habits. 
just wanted the prototype. And for that purpose, it was like, and that saved so much time because getting like time zones to work in that thing would have taken a, a gargantuan amount of time. It would probably be like the majority of the time I even spent on the project. Uh, so I just like, went for it. Uh, so I think that you should be very defensive about generalized solution and try to make things as dirty as possible. And instead like be more overt about like, this is a prototype that we are trying. Like we, and only make the like fancy thing once you're very, very sure of it. Um, like general things are, yeah, generalization is, is dangerous, I would say. It's dangerous. It's, uh, I've did, like I found, I found that much more projects have been destroyed by things being too general rather than them being too narrow. Underscore Fung says, oh, I want to write this thing. Wait, I should do TDD. Wait, how do I even test this? <laughs> That's the story of my life. That is why we don't have an overlay that has, has uh, Twitch. Uh, that's Twitch integration, you know, like, uh, I think I should just dirty code it first, make like a version that is buggy and shitty, and then write a nice version, maybe. Like it's, it's just, I tend to be so stuck in it, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh. Katsunk, I so suffer from over planning things too early. Yeah, you know, like um, this is actually a procrastination technique. Um, uh, over planning, it's um, me dropping pens constantly. Um, it's, it's a thing so that like it's, a, you have to understand that it's a compensation technique that you use to, um, to, to prevent you from facing reality. Because in a planning stage, your product is perfect. You don't need to deal with reality. You can just ignore reality. Uh, planning is sort of like a map of reality. You know how a map is not actually a picture of a city? It's just a simplified model of the city. And it's the same thing with planning, uh, that when you're in the planning stage, you can dream up that reality is easier than it is. You don't, like nobody ever writes hacks into their planning. Whoever does that? No, you don't, because you're just planning and you're wishing for reality to be nice. You're, you're thinking like on the planning stage, your, your code is still like, mm, this architecture is so nice. Mm, I, I cover everything, you know? Um, so I think that like planning is there for like this, this perfect, you can live in your fantasy world. And then, like another variant of it is to write frameworks. Because frameworks, frameworks are great because when you build a framework, you, you don't actually have to deal with a real problem. You can just invent an imaginary problem that doesn't have the edge cases that are nasty to deal with. So you just write a framework. Um, that, is, like, that is why frameworks are so great to procrastinate with. Underscore Fung says, follow up question. So I should, uh, should, should you just skip things like TDD when just hashing out a prototype? <sighs> I would say yes. I would say yes. Um, this requires though that you actually throw away the prototype. I think that like for me, I've found that it's very important when doing prototypes to write them very badly, very badly. You can't write a prototype that is sort of good. Like if you're not writing with tests, don't write with architecture, write fucking garbage that cannot possibly be used. Like it, it needs to be like the, the code and whole thing needs to just scream rewrite. Like don't do a nice design on it either. Like, or maybe like, eh. like it's just, that is dangerous because uh, if something is too good, it's going to be used, reused. So it has to be like under that level. Um, Robert Tables says, oh, this is good. This is good, Robert Tables. 
Premature abstraction can be much more deadly than allowing some duplication to arise. This truer words have not been spoken. Make it work, uh, then make it good, and if you need to, then make it fast. Yep, yep, uh, that's also very, very good. Uh, yeah, like, I, I think that it's... One of the most important things I learned as a software developer is to allow duplication to arise before removing it. Never anticipate duplication. You will fail in that anticipation. We are not that good at predicting the future. You are just, you are just being like a fortune teller then. And uh, like, it, 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 you're not gonna do it well. Um, generalize based on duplication and don't, two cases are not enough to see the general case. Like you cannot, you cannot see what a mammal is based on just a cat and a dog. You need to see an elephant. You need to see like a, <clears throat> you need to see uh, a deer and you need to see a dolphin. It's like you, you won't get what a mammal is. Uh, like you don't see the general thing until you have quite a wide range of things. Um, Surly Dev says, I've seen it argued that TDD can be useful when prototyping. One specific example is when exploring a new API. Oh, interesting. I actually think that I found that TDD is uh, really bad when developing APIs. I always do an exploration of the API first before writing tests. That's actually like a, the case where I never do TDD. Interesting that like somebody says that. Uh, Darko says, say if you were to write a thing properly from the first time, wouldn't you need to do less refactoring? Yeah, sure, if you write it properly from the first time, but the thing, <laughs> thing is, like this is like the assumption, this is assuming that you can write a thing properly from the first time. Uh, the, it's like, if you look at any product, any product in like the history, like any tech product, any software product, how many of those got it right in the first iteration? Instagram was a, like, there was a fucking bizarre, super complicated location-based checking thingy thing. And then they pivoted towards like a, a thing that just added nice filters to uploaded, uploaded images. And then I like Flickr was uh, some kind of online game thing with that failed, but they had a sort of good image uploading component. Um, uh, I don't know if you know this, but MT Gox, like the biggest Bitcoin exchange in the world until it shuttered. Um, like I thought, always thought that Mount MT Gox, that that was like referring to some like Chinese mountain, like Mount Gox or something. No, it stands for Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. And it was just like a, like the use, like it was a forum for trading magic, the gathering cards. And there was a, a segment on the forum where you could, could use like bit, uh, Bitcoin to buy, uh, buy magic cards. And then people just started <laughs> trading Bitcoin, but like you, just using, selecting any fake cards because it was like one of the few exchanges and eventually just morphed into, um, like one of the most biggest Bitcoin exchanges in the world, like just processing billions of dollars. Um, you never know, like it's, it's hard to predict, predict the, uh, the future. You're, you're almost gonna, you're, you're gonna do it wrong. Do underscore funk. For me, it's to do with the PTSD. I didn't plan, I made a lot of problems. And the pain from that echoes into the planning of future projects. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it, it comes down to though, if you, if, you, if you can plan or not. Like no battle plan su survives contact with the enemy, none. It's always gonna be like a bunch of, uh, bunch of problems. Like you cannot, you can never prevent shit from hitting the fan. You can only be good at cleaning the fan. 
Um, it's much better to invest in your shit cleaning skills than your shit velocity projecting skills because they're gonna hit. They're gonna hit. Like your servers are going to go down. Like you, there's going to be a critical bug hitting production and you need first and foremost to be good at like identifying problems and redeploying fast um, rather than trying to never have any problems in the first place. That's secondary, you know. And it's, it, this also is a lot related to where your product is in the cycle. If you're doing like, if you're not, if you're very sure about like what it is that you know works, like Spotify, for instance, like it's, it's a thingy that streams music. Like there's not a lot of experiments, experimentation space. Spotify is not suddenly going to pivot into a car sharing service. Um, we know that. But in the early stages of a, of a startup, like the code has a very low chance of survivability. Uh, TDD is a waste of time. Don't tell your interviewer that. Yeah, like TDD is one of the most valuable tools in my toolbox. Um, but I find that like it's important to, like it's important to like, it's good when you know sort of where you're going. Uh, when you know like sort of what the API is, uh, but you ca like TDD is way too much shit when you are doing complete exploration. When you, when you like, when you have no idea what, like, the, what the feature set is going to be like and like when things are going to be like highly, highly likely to be thrown away. Like it's the point of TDD is to add some inertia to your code so that it doesn't change as fast. And when you change it, you, you do it very carefully so that you don't accidentally change something. Um, and that's the same thing with static typing. It adds, it adds inertia. Like the inertia is what we want. You don't want to be able to refactor your code base into a car sharing service. You want the changes to be very, very slow and methodical. An MPJ says TDD. It sounds like a honking car. TDD. <laughs> Rackwolf says because MPJ is a transformer and his vehicle form is a truck. Honk. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was a little clip from the live streams I do every Monday morning. You can find them at twitch.tv slash fun fun function. Don't forget to check out our sponsor Brilliant. You can find a link in the episode description uh, that gives you a lot uh, of discount on your annual subscription if you want to sign up for that. Uh, if you're new, this is a show about programming. Uh, you, can, uh, you can also subscribe to more clips like these here. Uh, and uh, if you want to check out more about what this channel is about, you can do so here. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.